Okay. So good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Joint MSD and Cambridge Biomedical Seminar. And uh, we actually, we were hoping for a few more people to arrive, so we do thank you so much for, uh, for coming here. Uh, we do have some more on the way. Uh, but without uh, more ado, we're going to start off uh, with uh, um, Dr. Sarah Bond from Cambridge Biomedical, who's going to discuss um, MSD versus traditional ELISA for clinical applications. This was a white paper that uh, Sarah published um, must be a couple of years ago now, I think. A couple of years ago. Yeah, a couple of years ago. And then we're going to we have an interesting uh, program. Then we're going to go to uh, hey, Dr. Raina Picharova. We have some lunch coming. Uh, it should time for some networking. Then we have a, another uh, talk by um, your Dr. Um, your Bob Bayuma from MSD on their biomarkers. And then uh, Dr. Dan Duda on circulating biomarkers um, to evaluate cancer response. So there might be some more people joining us, so hopefully we're not going to interrupt things too much. But I'm going to hand over to Sarah. And I'll just queue up your, uh, your slide there, Sarah. Did you want to say that? Oh, no. Um, I was expecting usual introductions there. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know me, my name is Karma. I work with uh, the Cambridge Biomedical, or with MSD, but you know, work with Cambridge Biomedical. I've uh, known Marina for a long time, and Dan as well, and we were uh, very shortly, so. <laughs> Perfect. So thank you, Bob. Uh, again, my name is Sarah Bond, and I'm with Cambridge Biomedical. In case you're not aware, Cambridge Biomedical is a contract research organization that specializes in assay <coughs> development and validation. Most of the work with, that we do supports um, clinical trials, you would say, Bob? Yes. Uh, the majority um, under DCLP regulations, uh, but we also do have a very large amount of work that we do to support research use only, drug discovery and development efforts. And we also um, have done a number of bioanalytical bio studies to support true GLP tox studies, animal studies, preclinical. So um, today, oh, and, and again, uh, my name is Sarah Bond. I've been with the company for approximately five years. I have a background in molecular and cell biology. And uh, during my time at Cambridge Biomedical, I have been um, involved in the assay development and validation of several different types of assays using several different types of platforms including PCR, cell-based assays, and as well as uh, MSD, ELISA, and Luminix. Uh, one flow assay, although I'm not, I'm not by far not the uh, resident immunologist in the company. Uh, and um, today I wanted to tell you, so the, so the assays basically that we uh, develop, they can either come to us as a technology transfer from a, from a company, in which the assay, you know, it could, it could range any, anywhere from a, a tech transfer from a fully validated assay all the way through um, basically a, a pure lab developed test in which the, the sponsor or the client asks us to develop an assay for um, a particular analyte in a particular matrix. Um, so today, uh, I, was, I was hoping to give more of a technical discussion um, regarding assay development from the latter, the latter situation in which we're basically given uh, an analyte, a matrix, a target um, concentration range, and asked to de basically develop the assay from scratch. So one of the one of the assays that I wanted to talk about was um, was in support of a. Um, Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome, by the way. Um, very quickly, my name is Sarah Bond. I'm uh, with Cambridge Biomedical. I'm a scientist that's been there for about five years, working mainly in assay method development and validation to support, mainly to support um, bioanalytical research um, for clinical trials. Today, I wanted to talk about, uh, it's basically I'm focusing on a uh, technical discussion, um, talking about uh, the development of an assay basically is a lab developed test, an assay from scratch in which the sponsor or the client came to us and asked us to develop an assay um, to quantitate a particular peptide in human serum. So the analyte in this case was a peptide therapeutic 
Um, mainly uh, just a it's very small peptide, mainly just an alpha helix in this case. Uh, the matrix was human serum. The platform, they were open. Uh, it could be ELISA, MSC, um, whatever, whatever we thought would work best. Uh, the, the results were intended to be used to support pharmacokinetic analyses. And the available reagents that we had to us were um, one antibody raised against the peptide, specifically raised against the peptide, the biotinylated peptide itself, and the unlabeled peptide, which was the therapeutic. And we needed the assay to be developed to detect the peptide in the picogram per mole range. So the approaches, the, the platforms that we evaluated were both ELISA, traditional ELISA, colorimetric ELISA, as well as MSD. And we basically uh, you know, developed this assay with those two technologies in parallel. Uh, so, so just as a, a quick background, I'm, sh I'm sure you're aware, uh, ELISA is um, basically an assay that's used to quantitate substances and matrices, such as um, serum, plasma, urine, CSF, other matrices. It's a 96 or 384 well format. It's performed in polystyrene plates. And it depends on the binding of specific antibodies to the analyte. This is something that I just grabbed from Atcan. Um, so basically, in this case, the, uh, the ELISA, this is basically a sandwich ELISA to detect a particular analyte shown here in yellow using uh, capture and detection antibodies. The readout in most cases is color metric. Um, so the detection, one of the detection antibodies will be con conjugated to a Hirsaitis peroxidase, and the substrate in this case will be a colorimetric substrate such as TMB that turns uh, a particular color when um, incubated in the presence of the, of the substrate. And the results are read on an, basically a light absorbance plate reader. The ELISAs that we de develop at Cambridge Biomedical uh, for, for these ELISAs, the results are used mainly to support pharmacokinetic analyses, um, biomarkers, and also immunogenicity assays. MSD is very similar technology to ELISA. The only difference being um, that instead of using an HRP conjugated detection antibody, the detection antibody is uh, sulfotagged or ruthenium labeled, um, or the detection reagents are ruthenium labeled and the readout is electrochemiluminescence. So I'm sure that folks at MSD could walk through this slide much better than I could, but um, the, uh, the advantages of, of MSD technology over ELISA is the higher sensitivity, it has a much more broad um, dynamic range, uh, which allows you to detect the analyte in your matrix um, without having to dilute your matrix um, in many different ways and it has a much lower background. So because we had just one antibody to work with um, in developing this assay, we used a competitive bonding approach uh, rather than a sandwich ELISA approach um, that, that I showed in the previous slides. So the, basically for this approach, we, um, we coated the plate, either a polystyrene plate polystyrene plate for the competitive ELISA, or a, um, uh, an, an MSD plate for the MSD assay, coated it with a primary antibody that detected the peptide, and um, incubated, then incubated the peptide, the biotinylated peptide with cold peptide, and detected with streptavidin labeled either with HRP for the traditional ELISA, or with the sulfa attack of ruthenium label for the MSD. And the idea is that the, um, the higher the concentration of the peptide in the matrix, the lower the signal that you'll detect with the biotinylated peptide. So the higher the concentration, the lower the signal. So it's a reverse, um, a reverse center curve. So again, just to, to walk you through the, um, the assay format in, in basically the protocol that we used, uh, the first step was to coat either the multi-array MSD plates or polystyrene polysort plates 
or maxi sort plates with the anti-peptide antibody. Uh, block, add a mixture of the bitulinated peptide plus the unlabeled peptide and incubate. After a wash step, you would then detect with either the streptavidin called uh, conjugated with sulfa tag or HRP, and then develop and read. So before we could move to the competitive binding um, assay, uh, the first thing we need, the first things we needed to determine were the coding antibody concentration and also the concentration of the biotinylated peptide that we would, we would use for the competition. We would then be able to move to, um, after selecting a concentration of biotinylated peptide to use, we would then be able to um, um, test our standard curve ranges using the unlabeled peptide. So to select a concentration of uh, biotinylated peptide to use for the competition, uh, we basically um, again use the uh, competitive binding format, but excluded the excluded the cold peptide, the unlabeled peptide, um, in the initial in the initial studies. So in this case, we basically just coated the plates with the detection with the antibody, and incubated with increasing concentrations of biotinylated peptide detected either with HRP labeled uh, avidin or with the ruthenium labeled strept avidin. So we found the differences between the ELISA and MSD and basically what we were looking for was um, a concentration to select to use for the competition. In competitive binding assays we typically use, I don't know uh, if someone can chime in from MSC what you what you usually use at MSC, but at Cambridge Biomedical, we, we typically use around the EC90, um, not necessarily uh, the EC100 saturation point, just, just slightly under, and that allows us to ensure that we have competition with the biotinylated or with the labeled peptide, um, but, but that we're not oversaturating. So that, that was basically the purpose of, of this experiment, was to um, determine the EC90 concentration that we would select. Um, but we did notice that, you know, again, as, as, as I mentioned, MSC does tend to have a, a much more broad dynamic range than traditional ELISA. So you can see that the uh, linear range, in this case, for the ELISA, is approximately 0.5 nanogram per mil to about 10 nanogram per mil. And with the MSD, it was about, I would say, five to 2,000. You can see we hadn't reached saturation, but we're, we're close to saturation. In this case, it was approximately five to 2,000 nanogram per mil. So after repeating this uh, a couple of times, we, um, we basically, here I'm showing the EC50, but we basically selected the EC90 in each case. So approximately uh, that antibody concentration, or bitinylated peptide concentration. Okay. So from there, we move to the um, competitive binding assay in which we use that EC90 concentration of the biotinylated peptide and incubated with um, increasing concentrations of the unlabeled peptide and uh, just basically just to develop a standard curve for the assay. And in this case, um, so what, what we're looking at here is the actual full competitive binding competitive binding assay in which we are incubating with a, a, an unchanging amount of bitinylated peptide and increasing amounts of cold peptide. So this is basically would be the assay format that we would use for detecting the peptide in, um, in the human serum samples. And in this case we found uh, much less of a difference between ELISA and MSD for the actual competition the actual competitive binding assay. So in both cases, the, um, the IC50 uh, was approximately 50, 30 to 50 nanogram per mil. And I would say if this assay, if we were, would have moved forward with this assay, the lower limits of upper of quantitation would be um, somewhere around uh, 50 to 10 nanogram per mil. In this case, the uh, the client was interested in an assay to, for us to develop an assay in the picogram per mil sensitivity, and um, after 
many other uh, things that we tried. Uh, we, we weren't unable to to detect the analyte, or to quantify the analyte, basically, in lower than, um, you know, the low nanogram per mil range. So the conclusions in this case were that the next steps forward in this case were to basically explore, um, basically raise additional anti-drug antibodies um, and to basically, uh, you know, the, the Although the MSD did have a much more broad dynamic range and the results did look beautiful and the, it would have, the assay would have been terrific if we were to quantify in the nanogram per mil range. Uh, in this case, if we want to increase sensitivity, we were basically limited by the sensitivity of the antibody that we were using. And that was basically the next step that we, that we um, decided to do with this assay. So, um, the next steps for developing this assay, um, if, if, if you were to move forward with the nanogram per mil um, range and the competitive binding assay that I've, that I've described, the next step would be to then introduce the matrix. So everything that I showed you so far is in buffer alone. So then the next steps would be to um, repeat all of this once we had our assay development parameters um, in place, we would then introduce the matrix, determine an MRD in which the assay behaves uh, similar to uh, buffer, and then um, determine our ballpark linear range, LLOQ and ULOQ, identify control and validation samples that span that range, and then the next steps would be um, pre-validation assay performance parameters just to get a feel for the type of precision to expect from the assay and um, accuracy, sensitivity, and um, specificity and other performance parameters before we would actually decide to move to assay validation. So, um, with that, I just wanted to, um, so those, those are the next steps for the assay. Um, in, in both cases, it was, it was interesting to compare the MSC and the traditional LISA format. And um, with that, I will uh, I'll take any questions. Sarah, yes. can you comment in general uh, you know, with regard to the transition from using a buffer to actually using a, a real uh, matrix as, a, as the kind of issues that arise? Oh, sure, yeah, no, I mean, you, you will see matrices. <laughs> um, so the, for, for a PK assay, your standards would be diluted in matrix. Um, so basically the approach that we take is to identify an MRD in which the assay performs similarly to in buffer. So basically identify an MRD where we've diluted out any matrix effects and the accuracy um, and the recovery, if you do spike, things such as spike and recovery experiments, um, where the accuracy will meet any acceptance criteria that you might set for your validation. Sarah, I was surprised that your approach of using the reporter at what you call the the EC90, because that's such a high